Good evening, everyone. Community Hoops and TSP Television proudly present the Dick Sporting Goods Holiday Classic Championship. And it's going to be a big game and for everybody. All you girls basketball fans are in for a treat. Hopkins and Eden Prairie, two late conference foes, are going at it in the first of what could end up being four matchups throughout the season. Stick around as this exciting game will start in a few minutes. I'm Mike Peden, joined by Alex Nagel and what more can you say, Hopkins and Eden Prairie? Well, I tell you, this is a, a marquee matchup for big time under the flying time lights, and, and you can't ask, ask for a better matchup than this for the championship game, I don't think. Now, Hopkins undefeated and heavy favorite in, right now in Class 4A, ranked number one, and their victories include a thrashing of Lakeville North at this very facility at the Breakdown Sports USA Tip-Off Classic, but they've had a couple chinks Although they survived both, they had to get through a double-digit deficit with Osseo, and then they had to fight through a tough battle with Eastview to get here. Yeah, yeah, they did. They did. Uh, you know, I talked with head coach Brian Cosgrove early on, and, you know, he just says, you know, we've, we've got to make him play our attempt. We've got to wear him out somehow. ceremonies let's take a look at the keys to the game quickly for Eden Prairie it's all about ball control and defensive rebounding they can handle those two things they might be able to upset Hopkins that seems like a tall order given that Hopkins hasn't lost by less or won by less than 16 points all season well especially in this kind of a setting on Hopkins home floor too I think it's going to make their cast that much more difficult but on the other hand Mike they've got the height to be able to do the defensive rebound. Uh, rebound. You know, they've got a lot of height on that team. They can do a lot of damage on the boards. And for Hopkins, their keys to the game are to make it a race and get number four, Jackie Johnson, in foul trouble. Jackie Johnson averaging 17.7 points per game. Uh, in either case, it's going to be a star-studded contest in high school ball. Right now, let's take a quick look at the starting lineup. We'll begin with the visiting Eden Prairie Eagles. Starting five are Aubrey Davis, number three at guard. Number four, Jackie Johnson at forward. Davis and Johnson team captains, along with Shane Mullaney, number 33 at guard. Another team captain, number 34, Vulcan Van Riper Rose at guard. And Claire Willett, number 53 at forward. Jackie Johnson, the player to watch for Eden Curry. Eden Curry can run just as fast as Hopkins can. So in terms of tempo, neither team really has the advantage. Starting five for Hopkins is Brianna Williams, number 12, number 14, Julia Weimer, number 24, Ebony Livingston, number 33, Sydney Coffey, and number 43, Gracia Hudson. Sydney Coffey, the marquee player for Hopkins, averaging 12.2 points per game, three rebounds per game. If you're wondering well, why is this Coffey only averaging 12 points per game, Hopkins not afraid to use their depth. Oh no, absolutely, it's got a lot of it. And I think one key player to keep your eye on tonight for Hopkins is number 14, Julia Weimer. You know, how she handles that height and pressure from the Eden Prairie defense, Mike. And that concludes our starting lineups. We'd like to remind you, if you want to purchase a DVD copy of this game, just click the Purchase DVD link at the top of the page. You can also offer us your feedback by clicking the Support Suggestions link at the bottom of the page. We'd like to thank GrandStadium.tv for providing an outlet to webcast the Dick's Sporting Goods Holiday Classic. And this has been a lot of fun. I've been here for the last couple days. I covered the Richfield Holiday Classic, which you can also watch on GrandStadium.tv. 
Just basketball at its best. Holiday tournament, everybody's in action, and just a lot of fun. Everything's pretty loose. Well, you know, and this is going to be a great one to watch, obviously. And it's going to be interesting, Mike, to see in these first few minutes who comes out more relaxed and more confident, who, you know, who does some good things and makes it look easy. Hopkins wearing their black jerseys. Eden Prairie wearing white. Hopkins with the Duke-style jerseys. I've always been a big fan of it. And here's the tip off. Hopkins with the first possession. Eden Prairie, number two in class 4A. Hopkins, number one. Hopkins took down the previous number one, Lakeville North, on this very floor at the Breakdown Sports USA Tip-Off Classic in an 83-64 win. And Hopkins just dominated Lakeville North. More big picture. Jackie Johnson with the steal. There's Mullaney. A lot of folks, including Kevin Anderson, of the Sports Resource believe it's possible this could be the first of four matches between these two teams. Obviously, you have the two conference matches. You have this game, and you're wondering, well, what would be number four? The state tournament, Hopkins <laughs> and Eden Perry in different sections. And depending on the seating, these two could very easily face each other a fourth time. Wouldn't shock me at all. It'll be just like the old NBA. <laughs> divisions where you get four matches yep. against your division opponents. That's Livingston finding Hudson for the layup and Hopkins oh. strikes first. Stoppage in play. We have another television crew here tonight, Channel 12, the local cable access station. In fact, they have a former Hopkins alum and former golfer standout Leslie Knight doing color commentary. Knight, of course, had a great couple years. Her junior and senior seasons at the University of Minnesota. And now she's back here at her old stomping grounds. Got to be special for her to be back here tonight. Johnson to Willick. Mullaney with the switch. Eden Prairie led by former NBA journeyman Chris Carr. Clayton Hargrove was the former coach originally from Kentucky he left and Chris Carr came in one of two former professionals to be coaching this year the other is tomorrow Moore who's head coaching the Prairie Seeds Academy Likens Coffee misses the three and the rebound goes to Johnson but he loses it to Williams and Williams with the payback Williams and Coffee both division one recruits Williams going to North Dakota, Sydney Coffee going to Marist. Hudson with the steal and it's picked up by Livingston. Livingston coast to coast and the finish. I almost thought there was a traveling call, but I'm not the official. I see here in the early going, Mike, it seems to me that Hopkins has come out here with a lot more intensity and a lot more energy than Eden Prairie has here in the early stages. But Eden Prairie is no slouch. They swamped St. Paul Central in their first game and they dispatched Minnetonka easily in their second game. Traveling violation on Aubrey Davis, the former Bloomington Kennedy player. And Chris Carr is going to call a timeout with 15-22 remaining. Yeah, I think he needs to give this team settle down here a little bit. Look a little, a little out of sync here in the early stages. Already four turnovers by Eden Prairie and you're wondering how are we getting all these stats? We'd like to thank YZ Results, Inc. for providing live statistics throughout the Dick's Sporting Goods Holiday Classic. You can get statistical recaps of every game by visiting their site, yzresults.com. <laughs> Hopkins. Pretty much an epicenter now in terms of girls basketball. They host the Breakdown Sports USA Tip-Off Classic because that event became so huge they needed the space. And now they have their own tournament as well. Livingston, too strong. Rebound Mullaney. This is the fifth year of the Dick Sporting Goods Holiday Classic and Hopkins is no better place for it. Great facility here for sure, Mike.
Morgan Van Riper Rose, the University of Denver recruit, is short on the layup attempt. Livingston with the rebound. Williams inside to Hudson. And Mulaney with the block. Van Riper Rose has it. Davis to Van Riper Rose. Blocking foul is called on Williams. Van Riper Rose a little out of control on that put up, but it just goes to show you how fast she really is, Mike. Eden Prairie, they've gone with the same core of players for the last few years. That includes Van Riper Rose, Johnson, and Mullaney. Seems like only yesterday when Van Riper Rose was a fledgling newcomer to that Eden Prairie program, and he's really helped take this Eden Prairie program along, Mike. And you see we already have a big crowd on hand. A few other schools stopping by to watch this game. It just goes to show you this matchup will draw a few mainstreamers in. New player in for Hopkins with the basket. Was that waved off? Count it. it that was Nia Coffey who sat out in the Lakeville North game earlier this season. Lake Nia Coffey with the basket, the younger sister of Sydney Coffey. And Van Rife Rose was just a little late getting over there on the defensive end. The foul was issued to Van Riper Rose. It was not updated on the scoreboard, but we have the stats for you. Sydney Coffey with the steal after the Aaron pass and the layup. It's 11 4 Hopkins. Hopkins not missing a beat. Throughout the month of December, they've been a step ahead of every opponent they faced. Hudson with the steal. But it goes to Willick. And in effect, they cancel each other out. Mullaney to Johnson. 15-footer is short. Rebound and the putback by Aubrey Davis. Good hustle there by Aubrey Davis. Five Hopkins players have already scored, and Brian Cosgriff will call timeout with 13.24 left. Hopkins, of course, a very successful program in girls basketball, and one reason is just the mentality. I spoke with Cosgriff at the Breakdown Sports USA Tip-Off Classic, uh, had a couple of today, and he's very humble, you know, very mellow about it. And to him, he doesn't worry about having any superstars. Very similar style to what St. Paul does. If you're on Hopkins, you better be ready to play. Yeah, exactly. And you know, this is a, a program that has enjoyed a lot of success over the years. And you know, I, I think the reason for that is, you know, they, you know, they're a very classy program, a very classy bunch, but yet they expect to win. They expect to be successful, and they are. Yeah, down year for Hopkins is usually about, oh, 18 and 9. Something yeah. like that. What would be a great year for other programs. Mia was looking for Sydney, but it's intercepted by Mullaney, who has numbers. Goes to Johnson on the left side. Too strong. Johnson did not have good position on that layup, and Nia Coffey picks it up. Goes to Livingston. Working away around Davis. Kicks out to Williams. Sydney to Nia. Out to Williams again. Hopkins can beat you in many ways. Sydney Coffey will get called for the charge. She was going into a lot of traffic there, Mike. Hopkins athletic, but they're not invincible. But they're just as intimidating as a school oh, that's over at uh, Tobacco Road, uh, I think uh, Cameron Indoor Stadium. <laughs> and their jerseys about almost match. I'm referring to Duke. But you don't worry so much about them. Your big rival's USC. Taylor Ewell in the game for the Eagles. Taylor Ewell, the 2010 Miss Soccer in Class 2A. Eden Prairie turns it over after Carly Knudsen goes out of bounds. 
was pretty impressed with Taylor Eagle last night, Mike. She had a very good game for Eden Prairie. And for as great a soccer player she is, she was recruited by the University of Minnesota. We'll play there next year. I've heard she's also a solid basketball player. Oh, absolutely. You know, she's a good role player. She knows her role on the team, and she excels at it. And what's nice to see is Ewell playing basketball, playing other sports, having some fun before she starts college. You see some other athletes cut back on their other sports as Mia yep. Coffey drives in for the layup. I will get to that point in a second. You'll see other athletes like Lauren Gimmeyer when she was recruited for the volleyball team at the U of M. Mm -hmm. They'll cut back on their other sports to avoid injury and so yep. that nothing happens to them. Not Taylor. She's going to have every last bit of fun she can while she's a senior for Eden Prairie. Mullaney can't put it down. Rebound, Hudson. Sydney has numbers, drives. In and out, rebound, no put back. And Johnson picks it up. TT starts in the game for Hopkins. Ewell wasn't ready for it. And Knudsen draws the foul. 11.34 left in the first, Hopkins up 13-6. Now you, you saw Hopkins in their last couple games and they had to face a little bit of pressure. What did you notice in terms of composure and how they fought through those battles with Eastview you know, and Osseo? It, it, it's just the senior laden experience that they had with Lima especially. You know, she you know, she's, runs that offense very well and she keeps her whole team composed. T.T. Starks, the eighth grader, loses the ball. You never, you never see Julie Lima get too high or too low. She stays about the same through the whole game. And I think it wears off on the rest of the team as well. Then right for Rose to inbound, but she can't find a target. And that's just Hopkins pressure defense. They're always all over you, but sometimes they can leave the other court open, but you can't put down the bunny. T.T. Starks has an open right side. Closes quickly, and she's too strong. Rebound, Van Riper Rose. Ewell looking for Johnson, and Johnson's fouled. This is the fourth team foul against Hopkins. Jackie Johnson been relatively quiet up to this point, Mike. Foul is on Michaela Shackelford, number 44, who's in the game for the Royals. Ewell. Out to Van Riper Rose, back to Johnson. And you see Hopkins just in your face all the time. Oh, absolutely. Steal by Shannon O'Toole. And running up is Weimer, now going to Starks. Williams finds O'Toole. Weimer under her legs. And look at this, everybody going down on the floor. It seems very physical. Right in front of us, too. Williams too strong. Rebound, Ewell. Ewell scored a hat trick in Eden Prairie's shutout victory over Wyzetta in the Class 2A soccer final. But Ben Riper Rose loses the ball, and Williams loses the handle and can't get the layup. Oh, that was a big opportunity down the drain. Hopkins, 6 of 14 from the floor. Eden Prairie, 2 of 8. Eight turnovers already for the Eagles. Hopkins with just four. Mullaney open on the left. No basket, but free throws coming as the foul will go against Shackelford. Good recognition by Shane Mullaney on that drive, Mike. She saw that she had the opening of the lane. She drove in and took it, and she knew she was going to get fouled. Hopkins with just one foul left to give, and they're only up by seven. And so while they've been dominating, especially on defense, they haven't taken advantage of it all that well, and Eden Prairie is still very much in this game. Absolutely. If Eden Prairie can work on cutting down those turnovers, which is hard to do against Hopkins 24-7 full core pressure defense. Yeah. In fact, I've sworn that if they could, Cosgriff would have his five players go beyond the court, and if this was like a football field, he'd send out his entire roster. Yeah. But if Eden Prairie can force some turnovers, look out! And crashed into the Davis score. Took a hard crash into that. Uh, into the scores table. Opposite sideline scores table. 
Yeah, that's then great. almost crashed into the Wyzetta Results Statistician. Thank goodness that thing is made of unbreakable material. We've had a couple balls come our way over the course of the tournament. Nia in trouble, goes to Hudson. That was ruled a non-shooting foul. The foul is on Aubrey Davis, her first personal. Nia Coffey drives and scores. Ewell tripped, and that's easy picking for Nia. Livingston, bullseye! 18 to eight, Hopkins over Eden Prairie. I'd say this is a bigger obstacle for Eden Prairie than Hopkins right now, as Chris Carr calls timeout with Hopkins continuing their full court press. Yeah, yeah that was a good timeout taken there by Hood, head coach Chris Carr. He needs to get this team settled down here, Mike. And I've said this is a tougher assignment for Eden Prairie because they're not used to having this kind of challenge. St. Paul Central was shorthanded, Minnetonka, while talented, not close to Hopkins' level, at least not yet. Yeah, and you know, the, the defensive pressure that Hopkins brings, I mean, where they contest every pass, every pass, really has the ability to take you, take you totally out of your offensive rhythm. We saw that happen with Lakeville North, a team that was the, coming in, the number one team in the state. And the defending state champions as well. And then they follow that up with a loss to this very Eden Prairie team. Yep. Then Lakeville North found their footing again. Right now, most bookies have them as the number three team in 4A. Maybe not the depth or the talent to hold up with Hopkins or Eden Prairie, but again, they have a very big picture philosophy. And it's the exact same approach St. Paul Central took when they were undefeated, won the state title, and then won it the following year. Eden Prairie with a shorter, quicker lineup here on the court, Mike. Knudsen, and number 12 back in for the Eagles. That's Saxton. And another Eden Prairie turnover. That's their 10th. They are minus six in the turnover margin. Livingston goes inside, finds Hudson, and Hudson makes it work. 20 to eight. And Johnson and Mullaney set to come back in for Eden Prairie. Ewell looking for Davis. And that pressure defense getting to Eden Prairie, they're just not getting Chris passes off. And now with Jackie Johnson and Shane Mullaney back in, they've got to find a way to get Jackie Johnson involved in this offense where she can post up, Mike. Weimer looking for Livingston. And a foul on Livingston as you will go for the ball. That almost looked like a scrum after a fumble in the NFL. <laughs> Eight minutes remaining in the first half. 11 turnovers for Eden Prairie, and they've got to find a way to get past that Hopkins pressure defense. Mullaney to Johnson. Too strong, that won't do it. Eden Prairie just two of nine from the floor. By contrast, Hopkins 9 of 18. Yeah, and, and you know, we saw another miss there just a few moments ago by Jackie Johnson. She hasn't found any rhythm, certainly from a shooting standpoint at all. She is 0 for 4 so far. Stackelford to Weimer, to Nia. Stackelford wants the three. Is too strong. Rebound and the cleanup by Nia Coffey. That gives her nine points. Taylor Yule missed it on the other end. 
and Mullaney picks it up and puts it in. They seem like bodies are flying everywhere. Hopkins may have thought that ball was going out of bounds, they just let up. Nia, no foul. And Jackie Johnson with the rebound. Ewell looking for Mullaney, and it's picked off. O'Toole with, credited with the steal. Livingston, no good. Rebound. Weimer is fouled. And it's ruled a shooting foul. So two free throws coming. Weimer has yet to make a shot in this game. She has two rebounds, one assist. On the season, averaging 5.5 points per game, 1.5 assists per game. You know, one thing about Julie Weimer, she won't get you a lot of points, but is she a great leader out there on the floor running that offense, Mike? <laughs> Tell me one person on Hopkins' roster that wouldn't be a great leader. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be the bigger challenge. Our public address announcer, Tony Gear, might have some insight on that. Uh, he's a Hopkins beat reporter, but uh, that's about it. I'd also like to thank Tony Gear because without him, I wouldn't be here calling the action today. Willick misses the layup. And that's been a microcosm of this half. Reed it sure has. It sure has. TT starts too strong. And an over the back call on Hopkins. And that foul puts them in the penalty. Both teams a little out of control here on, on the uh, transition opportunities. Fouls on Shannon O'Toole, her first. No Hopkins player in serious foul trouble yet. Shane Mullaney averaging 13 and a half points per game coming into this night. And Hopkins up by 13. And they're up by 13 against a team that's nine and one. Their only blemish was to Hill Murray on this very gym <laughs> at the Breakdown Sports USA Tip-Off Classic in a match you and I called. Yep. In a game that may have proved Hill Murray could easily play with the big boys in Class 4A. Yep. But though, they got to settle for 3A. Shackleford from the corner. Short. Rebound. Goes to Williams. And the foul will go against Ewell. That's her second personal. The one bright spot for Eden Prairie is their six of six from the free throw line. Yeah. O'Toole to Shackelford. And Shackelford, how'd she make that work? She was off balance and she puts it in. That's just a measurement of the talent on the Hopkins staff. You're in and you're out. Mulaney in trouble. Feeling the pressure. Finds Yule inside the Van Riper Rose and she's fouled by T.T. Starks. That will be Starks' first foul. And Van Riper Rose, who has two points from the free throw line, will try to get two more. And that's another player for Eden Prairie, Mike, that's got to get more involved offensively. And we should point out, it's, it's difficult to get going offensively against a team that pressures you all the time, yeah. has yeah. the legs to do it, yeah. and the depth. Yep. They don't run out of energy. Shackleford. Misses Livingston. And oh. Ewell picks it off. But she can't handle it. Ewell just not catching a break tonight. I'll tell you, she really showed off her incredible athleticism there on that, on that deflection and steal. I should note she also picked up two goals in the Coaches Association All-Star game for soccer at the Metrodome. Livingston in and out on the three. Shannon O'Toole, no cleanup. Mullaney with the rebound. And you see how quickly the referees are going down court. They got to keep up with this too. Five second violation. 
The 14th turnover on Eden Prairie this well, half. You know, it, it, every possession that Eden Prairie has with that pressure defense, it makes them think twice. Williams with the charge. That's her second. It's an offensive foul, so no free throws for Eden Prairie. Sydney Coffey going back in for the Royals. Mullaney finds Willick, and Willick puts it down. That's the downside of the full court press. Yep. If your opponent breaks through it, they've got an open look. And a traveling call on Hopkins. And so we'll see if that last possession for Eden Prairie makes Hopkins think twice. A little opening here for Eden Prairie, perhaps, Mike. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. They're still very much in this game. Yule. Almost loses it, in trouble. Goes at it again, and look at her attacking the rim. Yep. And that's what they have to do. And she made up for the mistake. You know, she didn't let it get to her, just focused on attacking the rim, and it paid off. That's her first basket. No response, but Cindy Coffey with the rebound. Nia. Livingston, short. And that's the reason why Eden Perry's still in this game. Hopkins, not exactly crisp on shooting. Yule, with the switch. Nia Coffey on the other end. Draws the blocking foul on Willick. It was before the shot, and Eden Perry had one more to give, so no free throws here. I'm sure when we came into this game tonight, Mike, we all thought to ourselves that Jun that uh, Yule would play such a pivotal role here in this first half or even Prairie. Nia Coffey missed the short range shot and Mullaney has it, but she was off balance. Fight for the rebound, Johnson has it, no good. And it goes to Weimer. Johnson just not in good position there. It wasn't her fault, just an unlucky break. Livingston, no foul. Scramble for the ball. Jump ball, Eden Perry with the possession arrow. So with 3-12 remaining, we'd like to remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll have our first half stats and analysis and an interview with a special guest, Mike Amos, and Hopkins alum. Van Riper Rose, top of the key, off the mark, rebound, Hudson. T.T. Starks, traveling violation, and now Hopkins starting to rack up the turnovers. Yeah, I was just going to mention, you know, all those turnovers seem to come all for Eden Curry, and now here all of a sudden, in the last few minutes, Hopkins has been committing some turnovers. It's definitely changed the complexion of the game, Mike. Ewell finds Mullaney, and Mullaney off balance. But Johnson is there. She can't clean it up. And a foul on Knudsen which means Hopkins will go to the free throw line because Eden Perry's in the penalty. And Jackie Johnson continuing to struggle with her shooting touch here in this first half, Mike. 0 for 7 in this half. But Hopkins only shooting 35%. And you think, you look at this tape right now, you think Hopkins would be up by 20 points perhaps. But because they're not finding the basket, they can't get away. They can't pull away. 
T.T. Starks makes her first. On the season, Starks averaging 6.1 points per game, and three rebounds per game, 2.3 steals a game. Those three throws are our first two points of the day. Davis hasn't seen much action either. Long to switch. Nice assist there from Taylor Ewell as well. That's four points for Davis. Yeah, neither her or Johnson have been able to produce much offensively. Tackleford going left oh. and one. Talk about getting into a traffic jam on I-394. She got not only got into it, she finished as well. <laughs> Fouls on Knudsen, her first or her second. Shackleford completes a three-point play. That gives her five. Off the bench, he averages 9.8 points per game, and that's, again, just the style of Hopkins. Yep. Instead of having one player with 25 points per game, they'll have about six or seven players with close to 10. And they lead by 10 with 151 remaining in half number one. And another five-second call. The 15th turnover for the Eagles. And that's got to be driving head coach Chris Carr nuts. That's certainly not acceptable, even for his old days. Another charge on Hopkins. That's the third charging call in this half. And that's on Shackelford. That's her third. Decision time now here, perhaps, for head coach Brian Cosgrove. Perhaps, although with as deep a bench Hopkins has, players can afford to get in foul trouble. Eden Prairie doesn't have that same level of depth that Hopkins does. Ewell stops, pops, too strong. Rebound Johnson and she's blocked. And another foul on Eden Prairie. Johnson got blocked decisively on that, Mike. She didn't take the ball up to the glass very strong at all. I think she expected an easy shot. And Chris Carr having a word with Jackie Johnson. I'm sure he's been on the receiving end of that many times throughout his playing career. T.T. <laughs> Starks misses the free throw, though. It was a one-on-one -on -one situation. And Johnson can't handle the pass, it was too high. That makes turnover number 16. By comparison, the Gopher woman averaged about 20 turnovers a game, and <laughs> while that certainly does, isn't uh, admirable or... Look what, again. Oh, and the ball goes right by Leslie Knight. And Taylor Yule again involved in that near steal. I was about to go get it, but the official was there. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> Everyone's wondering who's going to get it. Who's going to get it? Mia yeah, Coffee missed, and TT starts is there, and she can't finish either. Johnson picks up her seventh rebound. Looking for Johnson, but it's stolen by Livingston. And Nia Coffey's there for the finish. Eden Prairie, you got, you're got to wonder when they're going to realize that, hey, Hopkins is going to attack the lanes every time. Yeah. You can't just pass like a basically in there. Johnson, here's an open look, and she draws the foul. May have lost a precious second putting that ball on the floor, Mike, but she did draw the foul, so she gets an opportunity here at the line. Fouls on Nia Coffee, her first personal. Johnson struggling to get any points. She averages 17.7 a game, 
we talked about the keys to the game was to get Jackie Johnson in foul trouble for Hopkins. Yeah. Well, they don't need to the way Johnson is struggling right now. You know, I watched you know, watch Johnson play tonight, Mike, and I'm wondering if she's feeling 100% uh, the other night, actually last night after Eden Prairie played, uh, she was sitting out here on the stands icing her feet and ankles down, so I'm wondering maybe if she's not feeling quite 100% physically. 15 seconds. Johnson does get her first point. Hopkins will hold for the final shot. Williams used up all of her dribble there, but she can't get the basket. Michael Cosm with the first half for Hopkins, just not able to capitalize on all those opportunities, but they do go into the locker room with an 11 point lead. Well, yeah, and you know, I think Eden Prairie is very fortunate to be down only 11 at this point. It seems like they're down by a lot more. Now we've got Mike Amos here in the booth, the Hopkins alum, and why don't you give us your thoughts on the first half? Well, how about we turn the mic on first? I, you know, I thought the first half, the Hopkins is sticking to their game plan. Their, the tempo is definitely the, the, their style, the way they want to play. And I think second half, you're really going to see Eden Prairie kind of start to struggle a little bit more because, you know, Bree with that ball pressure that she has, that full court ball pressure with the rest of the girls behind her, you know, I don't think Eden Prairie is going to be able to maintain uh, maintain this pace much longer. You know, and I, I was uh, talking with Mike, you know, I was wondering if Jackie Johnson of Eden Prairie, maybe she might be having, you know, not feeling quite 100% physically. You know, last night after their game, I saw her sitting on the bench here, icing her feet and ankles down. So I'm wondering maybe she's still feeling possibly some after effects. Yeah, you, you know, playing inside, uh, given that the girls have played, you know, three games, this is their third game, um, being a big, especially this game, a very physical game, um, you know, I'm, I'm certain she's, she's beat up a little bit throughout the week. She's a very talented girl. And so uh, I'm sure that kind of wears on you after a first, that first half running up and down, us bigs, we don't like to move, uh, move that much. Now, why don't you take us back to your playing days, perhaps, and why don't you maybe share some insights on what has changed since uh, you were wearing the blue and black of Hopkins? You know what? I, I was very fortunate because uh, Ken Novak Jr., it, he always, you know, kind of, was forward thinking when it came to basketball and so I always had the opportunity to you know trail and shoot the three coach always uh, gave me the opportunity to handle the ball so you know I wasn't always just a back to the basket player um, although that was my primary strength but uh, coach Novak I, I think working with the bigs and, and all of his players he, even his guards he feels uh, and you maybe don't see it a lot but he show, he teaches his guards even how to post up on the block. So uh, I, I think having the opportunity to play for Coach Novak, all of his players, they're well well rounded, and so they they have an under uh, an understanding of the game more than just a position. They they're taught the entire game. I got here early today, and I actually got to watch the Hopkins boys practice before they went off to Augsburg for the Best Buy Classic. And why don't we talk more about Hopkins and their history. The girls program, they've won a couple state titles. In fact, they have the best record since the start of this decade overall. And the boys are working on a three-peat this year for the state title. And what makes Hopkins such a consistent contender year in and year out in girls and boys basketball? You, you know, I think it's the tenacity of the kids' work ethic. Uh, what a lot of people don't see is you know, over over Christmas break, Joe Coleman, I, I get here uh, about an hour, hour and a half before everyone, and Joe Coleman is in here shooting, working on his shot before the walkthrough. 
and people don't see the time that these kids invest over the summer. Now there are a lot of kids who, you know, they, they come out and they shoot and they work on their ball handling and they might lift a little weight, but how they work out and how they get in the weight room and lift and, you know, it's a different intensity. It's um, almost like each workout and practice has a purpose, a specific purpose. A absolutely. And so, you know, at 8 o'clock in the morning over the summer, these kids, you know, Joe Coleman, Marvin Singleton, Siani Chambers, those kids will come in here and they'll, they'll just work on their ball handling. They'll come back in the afternoon, they'll work on their shooting. Then they come back later on in the evening, they'll get a lift in, and then they're playing, you know, pickup basketball. So... And I'm sure Joel Coleman gets a few tips from his uncle who spent some time in the NBA. Why don't you tell us about this event? I know you're a big supporter of Hopkins. And this event's been going on for five years now, and it's grown. And Hopkins is now also the host of the Breakdown Sports USA Tip-Off Classic. How is that helping raise the profile of not just the school, but girls basketball, where we have all the webcasts for every game and just all the attention that comes and just the crowd and just the aura surrounding these early events. Well, I, I think when you're taking a look at girls basketball, and um, I, I've had the opportunity through AAU last year to coach Nia Coffey, who, you know, unfortunately at the end of the summer she broke her ankle and she's been hampered by an ankle injury. She is the type of player that you're going to start to see coming from girls basketball and women's basketball. Uh, over the summer, she's able to go up with both hands and grab the rim. She's able to go up and block shots and take them off the backboard, which you're not seeing right now because, you know, she's a little out of shape. She hasn't played in a while. Um, and she has 11 points. <laughs> she so does far. have 11 points, but, uh, you know, she is a phenomenal athlete. And I, she's the type of player that could play and start for a lot of boys' varsity teams here That's in the state amazing. of Minnesota. And so... Overall, looking at the athleticism for the Hopkins girls program, I mean, there aren't a lot of programs that can rotate, have, have a nine-player rotation, and not lose any athleticism. Uh, the the pace, the the skill level doesn't change when the when the bench rotates in. So you know, when it comes to girls basketball, Hopkins is probably. Um, or definitely is the elite program. You know, and you know, I think another thing, you know, that uh, you know, the current this current squad, you know, they look at all the players who have played ahead of them, particularly somebody who's sitting over here to our left, mm -hmm. you know, and they see the the success that they have had and the success this program has had over the years, and they want to emulate that. Yes, you know, the probably the greatest part about the Hopkins programs, both the boys and girls side, is the alumni, they always come back and support the younger kids. Uh, they feel like they, they've they invested something into this program. The Coach Novak, Coach Cosgriff, they've invested into the kids, and in turn, the alumni want to come back and help out the younger kids beneath them. And so that's what really makes uh, a Hopkins Boys and Girls program, something special. Well, we'd like to thank you for taking some time to uh, speak with us, and it's uh, no doubt that you're still a big supporter of Hopkins, even though your playing days are behind you. And who knows, maybe we might see you down the road, and I'd certainly like to see this event expand. It's been a fun uh, experience covering both the Tip-Off Classic and the Holiday Classic. Yeah, it, this is a phenomenal um, event here, and what, what I would ultimately like to see is, you know, a, a rotation of boys game, girls game, and follow it and just keep the, the level of competition going because this has been a phenomenal event. They, Dick Sports, they put on a first-class uh, tournament, and... Um, so thanks to Dick Sports and every, all the supporters here. Mike Amos, Hopkins alum, once again, thank you for stopping by, and uh, good luck on your endeavors. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mike. And so while we... Great interview. Yes, and now we'll segue to our first half stats brought to you by YZ Results. The leading scorer is Nia Coffey, 11 points off the bench, two rebounds. Next is Michaela Shackelford. And Ebony Livingston with five points. Gracia Hudson has four points. And then several players have two. Defensively, T.T. Starks leading the team in rebounds with five. 
For Eden Prairie, it's been much more of a struggle. Shane Mullaney, 8.7 rebounds, two assists. Aubrey Davis with four points. Morgan Van Riper Rose with three. Claire Willick with two. Taylor Yule also has four. But the biggest person that you're not going to see leading on the in-game box score is Jackie Johnson. Just one point from the free throw line, 0 for 7 from the floor. Wow. Hopkins shooting 35%. Eden Prairie shooting 28%. But the biggest difference when you look at the team statistics is turnovers. Eden Prairie had 18 turnovers in the first half. Hopkins had 10. And Hopkins also had the edge on assists 5-2. to two. And yeah. really ball control has been the big difference as we looked at the keys to the game. For Eden Prairie, ball control was their first and most important key. And right now, that Hopkins pressure defense yeah, just it, it really all has, over them. It has made Eden Prairie look uh, quite discombobulated on offense at times, Mike. So Hopkins will get the first possession of the second half. Again, they're wearing the black jerseys, Eden Prairie wearing white. Livingston drives too strong. Hudson can't finish. And that's why Hopkins wasn't able to pull away in the first half, at least not to a margin that would beat Eden Prairie into submission. Eden Prairie very much in this. If Johnson can find some momentum, the way Hopkins is struggling right now in those easy looks, uh, Eden Prairie is not out of this. Morgan Van Riper Rose could start rolling as she gets the long two. That's her fifth point. Weimer was open, but instead, tries to drive, goes by Davis. Now it's double team. In trouble. Tie up, and Eden Prairie with the possession arrow. Well, Eden Prairie has to make some things happen early on in this second half, Mike, and they're doing exactly that here. One reason Hopkins has not been able to stomp on Eden Prairie, three-point shooting, just one of six. Eden Prairie just has one attempt from behind the arc. Davis, bounce pass to Willick. Then Riper Rose, used up a dribble, now goes to Johnson. Out to Mullaney. Looking for Johnson inside. Johnson wrestles it away. Davis for three. That's short. Follows her shot. Mullaney picks it up, and she gets the cleanup. That wasn't scripted, but give credit to Eden Prairie for making it work. <laughs> it wasn't the prettiest, and it was tough. Well, two points are two points, no matter how flashy it is. Hopkins doing a little Globetrotter ball with the running passes. Now they back off with 15.53 to go in the second half. Theoretically speaking, and I don't see Hopkins doing this, they could run out the clock. There is no shot clock, so they could do this for 15 minutes and 43 seconds, but uh, they're too aggressive for that. Prairie trying to cheer on their fans. They cut a big contingency of Eagles fans here in a school that's known for football. But also won the 2A soccer title this year and recently won the 2A boys hockey title. And finally, a traveling violation on Hopkins. And sometimes you can get too patient. Well, you, 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 know, you can. And uh, you know, I, I think you know, these are the little things that have been catching up with Hopkins. You know, they were at, as that first half wore down, right? That's also not necessarily Hopkins style basketball. You know, they like to drive, they like to move, and they're quick. That's another five second call on Eden Prairie. Hopkins though, not necessarily a team you would see backing off like that, eating up yeah, clock. Yeah. And they don't have enough of a cushion, I don't believe, to back off too much. 
A blocking foul will be called on Eden Prairie. It's on Mullaney. That will be her second. We hear the very vocal nature of Chris Carr as Ebony Livingston with the layup. Eden Prairie has numbers on the other end. Mullaney with the answer. And all of a sudden, Mullaney getting very involved on the offensive end, Mike. Ooh. Mullaney has 10 points and another Eden Prairie foul. Fouls on Van Riper Rose, her second. Eden Prairie only sending seven players so far. Hopkins with eight. Sydney Coffey can't get the foul. It will say Hopkins ball though. Well, this is one of those games where I don't think uh, either team is looking for an upset, so to speak. Williams with the mid-range J. I mean, if Eden Prairie pulls this off, I don't know if folks would call this an upset. Davis draws the foul. And that's the key, I think, for Eden Prairie here in the second half, Mike. They've got to find a way to make drives to the basket, slash to the basket, and draw fouls and get to the line. So Aubrey Davis with four points and three rebounds. But you got to convert on those free throws as well, Mike. That foul was on Weimer, her first. Davis gets the back in. Less than 14 minutes to play. Hopkins with an eight point lead. Williams, short this time. Rebound, and another Eden Prairie foul. They're having trouble playing defense well, without fouling, and that could hurt them later on. And you know, the other thing, they didn't do a very good job of blocking out uh, Gracia Hudson on that. She got a second chance and was able to put the ball back up and got fouled doing it. Hudson, it's her first trip to the line. She has four points and four rebounds. If you're head coach Chris Carr, you've got to be stressing boxing out right now, not letting Hopkins get second and third opportunities. Especially since Eden Prairie has not cut the margin to less than seven. Van Riper Rose looking to change that. Can't hit the three. Rebound Nia Coffey. Whoops. And Rihanna Williams passes to absolutely no one. <laughs> Miscommunication. I'm not sure what she was expecting Ebony Livingston to cross over the other way, but there was nobody there. See if Eden Prairie can capitalize on this. Johnson draws the foul. And when you're struggling from the floor, as she has, she's 0 of 7. Sometimes drawing those fouls is one way to correct that. Foul is on Livingston. That's her second. Johnson, a junior, no doubt she's going to get some looks from Division I schools. Saw quite a few minutes as a freshman for the Eden Prairie Eagles under their former head coach, Clayton Hargrove. And that X Factor, Taylor Yule, back in the game for Eden Prairie. X Factor and Class 2A, Miss Soccer. Yes. <laughs> In fact, all of her goals in the last two games of her career in terms of soccer at the final and at the All-Star game happened on the same net. Wow. Hudson missed the short-range layup. Johnson had the rebound for three. Van Riper Rose buries it. And it's a five-point game. 
And Jackie Johnson will be called for the foul. Eden Prairie with just two more to give. The foul is Johnson's first. No player on Eden Prairie's roster in foul trouble yet. That three from Van Riper Rose was Eden Prairie's first of the game. Haven't gone outside too much. Only one of four. Williams is blocked by Johnson. Sometimes it's those little things you've got to do, Mike, like getting blocks, getting rebounds to get yourself back into the flow of the game. Beamer looking for Williams, finds her. And Williams, that's almost automatic. Just so strong. Williams, 3 of 11 from the floor, though, but that gives her 6. And even though she's been struggling, she hasn't given up on her offensive game. And that's exactly what you want to see. You keep trying, and eventually you're going to get a basket. Van Riper Rose, that was deflected, I thought. And she gets her own rebound. It will stay Eden Prairie ball. And here comes Cindy Coffey, and TT starts. They'll give Livingston and Weimer a rest. 12.02 remaining in the second half. Davis. Finds her target, that's Mullaney. Yule drives, bounce pass for three, that's Davis, no good. Rebound Van Riper Rose. Looking for Johnson and losing it to Coffey. Yule strips it away and stops what would have been another layup from Coffey. Taylor Ewell has literally been everywhere tonight, Mike. You sure it's not too late for her to sign up for basketball? <laughs> Dave Winfield was a multi-sport athlete over there. Yep. Mia Coffey with a traveling violation. I'm no, sure Winfield played baseball and basketball over I'm, there. I'm sure there's a lot of co college coaches that wouldn't mind having Taylor Ewell on their squad at all. <laughs> But she is heading to the St. Paul campus at the U of M to play soccer. And Van Riper Rose couldn't find a target, so she bounced it off coffee and will reset the five second clock. And she does find a target in Mullaney. Reed and Prairie can get this a one possession game. They'll put some pressure on Hopkins, traveling call on Mulaney. They just can't find a way to stop those turnovers, though. No, I tell you, that turnover bugaboo has just really haunted them tonight. And still, they're only down seven with a lot of time left as well. Hopkins shooting about 35% from the floor. One reason why they haven't been able to pull away. Starks to O'Toole. Starks for three. That was altered, and Davis picks it up, finding Johnson, but she's stripped by Williams. You have to be perfect with your passes almost all the time, or Hopkins will what pick a, you off. What a play by Aubrey Davis. And My yeah, goodness. Just as I said that, Davis with the strip, so they cancel each other out. Ewell deflected, and it will go to Hopkins. If Ian Prairie could just catch a break. Yeah, and, and those breaks have been far and few between for him. And when they do catch them, Hopkins gets them one right back. Yep. Ten thirty to go. We have yet to see a run. Mia short follows her shot and gets the layup. Van Riper Rose open on the other end, and she gets fouled by Nia Coffey. That will be her second. Van Riper Rose will shoot two more. She is three of four from the line. Much to the dismay of Father Richard sitting there on the end of the bench. So 
And right for Rose, now has nine points, also has five rebounds. For a coach like Chris Carr, who spent some time in the NBA, now he moves over to do the coaching ranks, what's the transition like for him? You know, I never had a chance to ask him. Um, I'd like to ask him that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that there's some elements that he's picking up along the way. Still integrating with his system, but the coaching staff said the players and they all love him. Well, he's done a great job continuing the Eagle Pride. Nia Coffey with another layup. That's 15 points. Johnson, 0 for 8 now. She has 10 rebounds, but still has yet to find a first field goal. Hopkins sending out Shackelford, Hudson, Weimer, and Sydney Coffey. And TT starts. Essentially a line change. TT starts, loses it. Van Riper Rose picks it up. Stops, pops, no good. Yule steals it. Mullaney, spin move, and she's short. Rebound, Weimer. They've had some opportunities, Mike, but they just can't seem to convert. Certainly not the cleanest game I've seen out of either team. Hopkins just 34%, Eden Prairie 29% shooting. Not sure if that's what was Bill going into this game. But it, it's still anybody's game right now. A lot of time left still. So near that nine minute mark. A lot of time, but slowly running out for Eden Prairie. In and out on the three from Coffee. That would have been big. But she gets another try. Again, no good. And another offensive rebound for Hopkins. Hopkins plus six on offensive rebounds. Hudson. Makes the third time the charm. And that's a killer possession there. Hopkins had three opportunities and they were able to cash in. Those second chance points, always a big deal. Yule, short. Eden Prairie just not getting any clean shots no. off. TT starts. Or Williams missed a shot, and picked up by Van Riper Rose, who gets fouled from behind by Shackelford. And that will be her fourth. I'm not sure if we'll see her. They'll send in Livingston, and a timeout is called with 8.07 left. Time out here, 807 left. How does Eden Prairie find the basket? Something they've struggled to do all night. Well, you know, I, I still think that they've got to find a way somehow to get Jackie Johnson posted up. You know, every time they've tried to go down low to her, the ball has always been tipped away or stolen, and, and they just have not been able to establish, you know, any post presence at all for Jackie Johnson. I mean, they've done an outstanding job on her tonight. And if Hopkins does pull out with the win, they're up by 11 with 8.07 left, what would it mean for them and what would that do in terms of the rankings and the analysis among the writers? Well, I mean, they'll obviously, with a win tonight, retain that number one ranking. Um, you know, and I was thinking about this early on, you know, who, who needed this game more? Uh, in my own humble opinion, I thought Eden Prairie needed this game more simply because with a win tonight, that would establish themselves as a true state title contender. Van Riper Rose with the three. Van Riper Rose providing some key shots in this half. I did speak with both coaches and they said the, if nothing else, 
because they have two conference matches against each other, this will give them some film to work on for round two. Yeah. Ewell forces a steal. Mullaney loses it right back to Williams. I don't know how many steals he's had, but she always seems to find her way. Deflected off Ewell. 11 steals for Hopkins. Brianna Williams is credited with three of them. Taylor Ewell again almost with a steal. But instead, Sydney Coffey is there for the basket. And Hopkins up again by 10. Johnson out of the lineup right now. Willett was fouled late. It's a shooting foul. It's on Livingston. That will be your third. And Willick, who has one field goal tonight, makes her first trip to the free throw line. Jackie Johnson and Aubrey Davis poised to come back in for Eden Prairie. Perhaps make a final push here. Davis, 2 of 5 with 5 points. Johnson, 0 of 8 with 3 points. Still, you've got to give Eden Prairie some credit here, Mike. You know, they're down only, only 8 at this point. They've been able to cling to life, but it's been a tough cling. And while Hopkins has struggled overall from the floor, you know, not the numbers they would want, Mia Coffey's had an excellent game, 7 of 11. Aubrey Davis is called for the blocking foul. Both teams now with one to give. That foul will be Davis's third. And you saw Eden Prairie come in with a little pressure in the backward on Julia Weimer. And Eden Prairie staying in this game in part because they are 15 of 18 from the free throw line. Hopkins 8 of 9. And a traveling call on Hopkins. So another turnover. Eden Prairie. Not done yet. There's still an eternity to go. 6.49. Coffee ran right into Jackie Johnson there. Ewell stops, pops, and gets the mid-range switch. Huge bucket for Eden Prairie, Mike. It's a six-point game. But Coffee's open on the left side, and Johnson fouls Coffee. Yeah. So that means Eden Prairie out of fouls to give. And once again, in an attempt to force some pressure, Hopkins finds the open yeah, target. Yeah, they did, and Jackie Johnson simply got over there too late. Sydney Coffey knew she was going to get fouled, so she took it to, right, to the, right to the hole. That's his Coffey's first trip. She had four points and one rebound. Quiet night for her. But Coffey is just one of two. Davis gets the pass off before the five second call and Johnson just can't find an open look no. in the lane. Sure, she, they've been cutting that off. Hopkins making her life miserable tonight. Hopkins has done their work. Taylor Ewell stops, pops, and gets another 14 footer. Yeah, that's one person they have not stopped tonight, Taylor Ewell. That's because she's a great soccer player doesn't mean she's also not a, <laughs> that she's not a good basketball player. Oh, great athlete for sure. Oh my. And one. Gracia Hudson. That's a huge basket for Hopkins at this point in the game. And that one's going to go on Aubrey Davis. That's her fourth. They've made life difficult for Davis as well. So Hudson completes a three-point play. She has 11 now. 
Eden Prairie's been unable to get that margin past five. They could get it to one possession. That might give them some light. Van Riper Rose misses the three. Gets her own rebound. Feeds to Yule, and she can't finish. Coffee driving left. Johnson shuts the door this time. But Hopkins can kill clock here with 5.11 to go, and I think they're going to get to a point where they start doing that without a shot clock. You can hold the ball for as long as you want. Van Ryan Perose gets called for the foul, and Eden Prairie's in the penalty, so Hopkins will shoot one and one. Van Ryan Perose thought that was incidental contact. And I think she may have had a good point on that one. The more games I've followed this season, the more I wish there was a shot clock. Ooh, off the glass. Well, still good for Brianna Williams. <laughs> with six points and three rebounds. This is her first trip to the free throw line. And the reason why I wish there was a shot clock is because the fans and the viewers who are coming in, you know, they're not paying to see a team pass the ball around and just kill clock for about two or three minutes. They want to see who can come through in the clutch. But there's still plenty of time. Hopkins foul. They had one to give. It's on Williams. That's her third. And Hopkins, although with a nine-point lead, they're certainly not out of the woods yet by any stretch. If Eden Prairie could find some shots, if they could find a way to get Johnson going, that would be a big boost. This is Knudsen. And another Hopkins foul. One and one situation for Eden Prairie. The foul is on Hudson. And Johnson missed. Jump ball, Hopkins possession. Hopkins is killing some clock here. Now Nia drives left, short. Hudson can't get the cleanup, but she gets the steal and misses again. And Hopkins fouls Jackie Johnson, so free throws again, but Johnson missed her last attempt. She is three of five on the evening. Looked like Eden Curry had snared that ball away for good, but then Gracia Hudson was able to whack that ball away and get another chance. Just but couldn't, couldn't finish. finish. Hopkins missing a lot of short range shots tonight. That foul is Starks' second. And you know, if this gets closer in these closing stages, you know, head coach Brian Cosgriff is gonna to wanna to reach for the Tylenol PM tonight. <laughs> Jackie Johnson makes both free throws. It's a seven point game. But again, Hopkins able to hold their ground when it looks like Eden Perry's about to knock on the door. This is a program with the best record since the start of the last decade. No one has more wins than Hopkins. And Hopkins only has two state titles to show for it. They have not made the state tournament since, since they won in 06. And now Cosby calls a timeout with 3.29 left. A seven point lead, but I would say a tenuous seven point lead, Mike. Again, they have no shot clock, so Hopkins controlling their own destiny right here. Yeah. And oh, we're gonna be on. <laughs> There's all oh, sport yeah, that's photography. All right. 
giving Me us twice. That's all some right. love. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> if you want to uh, get involved, just go to the site, allsportphotography.com. We'd like to thank them. They've been providing photos of this event from start to finish, from day one to this game. And there include custom panoramic photos. I had a chance to check out some of the uh, photos he had from the previous two days, and it looked very sharp. Yep. And you know, regardless of the outcome here tonight, Mike, it's got to be a, a, a disappointing <laughs> game here for Jackie Johnson. Just has not been able to get involved offensively at all, has not been able to post up or create any opportunities on her own. It's been a tough goal for her tonight. And you know Hopkins is going to look at this tape and wonder why we missed so many short-range looks, yeah. those point-blank yeah. shots, yeah. which should be automatic. But you can't simulate what an opponent will do to you. Yeah. Even with a team like Hopkins. Foul on Eden Prairie. Again, they were in the penalty. So, one-on-one -on -one situation for Hopkins as Gracia Hudson goes to the line. She is three of three. And 11 Jackie points, Johnson. nine rebounds. Foul is Johnson's third. And now Davis goes back in. Delaney missed the layup. And a foul on Newell. This one getting pretty close to going in Hopkins' bag. Nia going to the line. She leads all players with 15 points, has six rebounds to boot. That last rebound by Hudson on the other end gives her 10, so she will end this game with a double-double. And Nia on her second and third tries is clutch, 17 yeah. points. And now down by 11 points, Mike, if you're even Perry, was it closed down on the three-minute mark, I think you've got to start thinking in terms of the three-point shot. Aubrey Davis drives to the right and draws the foul. But that's what Hopkins wants in a sense. It's because Eden Prairie can only get two here. They can't yeah. close that margin. Davis was one of two. Now she's one of three. Quiet night for her. Five points, three rebounds, just not getting a lot of opportunities tonight. The player averages 8.3 points per game. She gets one, but the margin is 10. Three minutes left. Eden Prairie now going full court. But Hopkins knows how to play that since they often use it themselves. Look at that ball movement by Hopkins. And they are not going to take a shot. They're going to force Eden Prairie to make a mistake. We're going to steal. Mulaney picks it up. Coffee deflects it, but it rolls out of bounds. Thule in the game for Eden Prairie now as Aubrey Davis has four fouls. Now she goes back in, so Thule being used as a defensive substitution. Davis, almost trips, uses her dribble. Van Riper Rose, missed the three. No, it goes in! <laughs> I thought it was, she bricked it, but it bounced off the glass and in, almost like Gilbert Arenas, the shot he made for the Magic. That one did not count, though, because it hit the shot clock, which is out of bounds, but. You were as surprised as I was. I didn't think that shot had a chance of going in. So that three gives Van Riper Rose. <laughs> 
15 on the day. Well, nonetheless, here you're you you're, 18. If you're Eden Perry, you're down by seven here. 223 left. I think if you're head coach Chris Carr, you not only want to think in terms of a three-point shot, but now I think you're almost forced to bring that full court pressure, start gambling a little bit and rolling the dice. And we should know that neither team will take this game too seriously. Yeah. Uh, it's a holiday tournament. We still have two full months left before we worry about playoff time. Yeah. And these two teams will play each other two more times as they're both Lake Conference members. It's a seven point game, but again, Hopkins always finding a key basket in those situations. And Riverosa's 15, if you point that out. Williams, no foul. And Eden Prairie will get possession. 2-0-1 left. And once again, Davis going back in as Carr continues his substitution of Fuel and Davis. And Riper Rose looking for her target. Finds Johnson open. Going to Ewell. Ewell's too strong. Mulaney will get free throws. Well, Ewell had a good look at the basket. She just couldn't put it, put it in off, uh, off the window. In some aspect, though, this also helps Eden Prairie because it stops the clock with 1.55 left. Mulaney with a double-double for the Eagles tonight as she picked up her 10th rebound after that miss. She had 12 points, now it's 13. Well, down to six points. And again, Duell going in for Davis. It's now a five-point game, 58-53, and now Hopkins with a little bit of pressure. Traveling yeah. violation on Livingston. Eden Prairie with a chance to make this a one possession game. This is the toughest assignment Hopkins has faced all season. What looked like would be a grinded out win for Hopkins. Now they've got to fight out a little demon of their own. One forty-three left. And I like Eden Prairie's not rushing anything. They know they still have time. Beavis thought about the three when she had it. Davis. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh my. Two point game. More pressure on Weimer as well. And a timeout called by Brian Cosgrit with 1.13 remaining. Well, I thought this game was done. Well, I and tell Ida you. Prairie finding their shot in the last four minutes. Yeah, I, I tell you, you know, the funny thing was before that shot when Davis had the ball hoping there on this side, she was thinking about the three shot, three point shot, and, she, and then she thought better of it. But when she got a little opening there on the left side, she took it and it went. Now you're down by two, and how does this change the game? Because now all Eden Prairie has to do is just force another steal. They don't necessarily have to foul. If the clock starts running too much, though, then they might have to. Well, obviously, Davis's three-pointer changes the whole complexion of the strategy now for Eden Prairie. Now you don't have to think of that three-point shot here right now. You're only down two points, so you still want to come with some pressure. The one thing you don't want to do is commit a stupid foul. No. Both teams in the double bonus. Davis with four fouls. And look at that crowd. Oh, they're getting loud. Hey, look up at this crowd. It's almost like a who's who of people who are here tonight, you know? I wonder what Leslie Knight is thinking over uh, to our left. In yeah, the I know. Booth. I'm sure she's seen a lot of these situations before <laughs> as a player, wearing the blue and black. And then wearing the maroon and gold. Ooh. Coffee again, Hopkins can kill clock. They are up by two. And there's no shot clock, so Hopkins is not forced to do anything offensively outside of that five-second call. Foul on Johnson. That will be a fourth. 
Now we talked about turnovers. One reason why Eden Prairie has clawed their way back, only four turnovers this half yeah. after committing 18 in the first. Hopkins, 10 and 10. Yeah. Big free throws now for Brianna Williams. She is one of two on the night. Hopkins as a team now 16 of 19 from the free throw line. Eden Prairie, 20 of 25. Both teams very solid, very disciplined from the charity strike. Now Eden Prairie is forced to score. It's 60-56. And I think they've got to score quickly here, Mike. No kidding. They cannot afford a turnover. Ooh, thought Davis is going to go for three again. Instead, she drives to the hoop, and she misses, and she can't get the put back, and she might be thinking about that one. Eden Perry forced to foul, and that might seal this. Yep. You're right, Davis had a look, didn't go for it, and you wonder, she might think about that one for a while. Yeah. You go, give it to Williams, and <laughs> there is nobody on Hopkins that has a weakness in free throw shooting. And I think you just jinxed her. Uh, yes, I did. <laughs> I, Cosgrove might not want me back here again. <laughs> but while, while we're on that subject, we would like to thank uh, Barry Cosgrove and the rest of the Hopkins staff for their hospitality throughout this tournament. Absolutely. Uh, feeding the media, photographers, coaches, they've done a great job. Oh, they've done an excellent job. Always do. Williams misses both. Fight for the rebound, goes to Mullaney. And Ewell got to get it off for yeah, 13 she's seconds. She's taking too long. Picked up by Williams, that will do it. Livingston will finish it. And Hopkins will escape with a big win with 4.9 seconds left as they will stay undefeated, moving to 11-0 in the season. Eden Prairie will follow the 9-2, but I think this game will show everybody, the fans, the riders, that Hopkins is not invincible, and that t the rest of the field is slowly catching up to their level. Well, you know, I mean, they'll obviously retain their number one ranking, but, and, you know, as you said in this game more than once, uh, you know, you can only put so much stock in a late December game. You know, they've not regular season conference games yet, and that'll be fun to watch those two. Um, but yet, if you're Eden Prairie, you know, you're, you're going to come away from this game thinking about missed opportunities. Uh, the turnovers they had in the first half, not, getting, not being able to get Jackie Johnson involved offensively at all. And you have to give Hopkins credit for shutting Jackie Johnson down completely. Yeah. 0 for 8. The only point she got was from the free throw line. She does have 12 rebounds, but I'm sure she'd give up a few of those to get a few baskets. Mulaney gets the rebound, it's a move point now. Hopkins will stay undefeated and eke out a big win, 62-56 over Eden Prairie. Player of the game, no doubt about that. Nia Coffey, 17 points, eight rebounds. Gracia Hudson finishes with a double-double with 13 points and 10 boards. Shane Mulaney will also get a double-double, 14 points and 12 rebounds. And what it came down to, let as you said, Hopkins shutting down Jackie Johnson. If yeah, she even gets two or three, this might be a different outcome. Yeah, that, that uh, if she had been able to get on track at all offensively, you know, obviously it would have been a different, uh, uh, a different story for, for Eden Prairie. It would have, would have not put them in a hole early on in this game. And, and they were able to climb out of it. You know, you got to give them credit. They got themselves in a position where they had a chance, but they just couldn't quite get over the top. We're now naming the all-tournament team. Morgan Van Riper Rose had a very solid game of the today. Sydney Coffey, no surprise. In fact, all these uh, <laughs> all tournament <laughs> honorees really don't surprise you. They're no, all the big no. names for Hopkins. No. Brianna Williams had a lot of steals tonight. Three of them, actually, but nine points, three boards.
They're now giving Ian Perry the second place trophy. And while we're at that, we'd like to thank All Sport Photography and PhotoBallGuide.com for sponsoring this tournament. We'd like to thank once again YZ Results Inc. for providing live stats throughout the tournament. I'm not sure what uh, what the dates when these two teams will hook up again, but. You can bet it'd be something that you'd want to watch. I'd sure like, I'd know I'd sure like want to watch them when they hook up again. They'll be announcing the Hopkins Championship Trophy for the hometown Royals shortly. And once again, I have to think this game will cast a little doubt. I think everybody had Hopkins <laughs> as the primary favorite to win the state title. And I think some folks were all ready to mail them the trophy. And Eden Prairie, even though they didn't come up with the win tonight, said not so fast. Yeah, you know, uh, you don't want to be handing out state uh, state trophies in, uh, in late December. Uh, that can be a dangerous proposition at best. <laughs> and and uh, I think uh, along with Eden Prairie, I think there are some other teams that may have a little something to say about that. I was very impressed with Osseo earlier this afternoon. Uh, you know, I think they've got a, a good shot of winning their section. Um, you know, and I think if they have, have the right seating, uh, the right draw, their target center, they could, uh, they have the potential to do a lot of damage, I think. We'll have to find out what happens over these next two months. And uh, once again, I'm Mike Peden here with Alex Nagel. Thank you for watching.